Hello, everybody, and greetings from Brussels. We can rely on technologies to keep marching onwards, always evolving, and that's despite the geopolitical realities that surround them. We are doing everything we can to help our neighbours in Ukraine as they deal with an unjustified Russian aggression and the war on their soil. At the same time, we are forced to face our own vulnerabilities in the EU. We are too dependent on Russian fossil fuel imports. That's a simple fact. It has gone on too long, and now our, our citizens are more vulnerable as a result. So it's time to act, to remove the grip that Russia has on our energy system, to take full control of it into our own hands. And last week, we announced that we are doubling down on our Green Deal to make this happen. Our plan is called Repower EU. It's about saving even more energy where we can. It's about producing and using more renewable energy and diversifying our gas supplies. Last year, we set historic records with the Fit for 55 package. But now the clean transition is even more urgent. So we are going even further. However, we know that around half of the clean energy technologies needed to decarbonize Europe by 2050 are not yet on the market. These two realities are at odds. We cannot slow down our efforts on research and innovation, quite the opposite. We need to lean in even faster to new technologies if we want to reach net zero and zero Russian imports on time. Repower EU gives us direction. It outlines key technology areas solar, wind, green, hydrogen, biomethane and heat pumps. These five show that there is no one-size-fits-all solution. Creating a synergy between various sources gives us an opportunity for the most impact. The plan will also help us sidestep any obstacles in our way. Investment, regulation and perhaps most importantly permitting. It also ups the ambition in a concrete way with higher targets. By 2030, we will aim to triple the EU's photovoltaic and wind capacities. For renewable hydrogen, we aim to boost hydrogen production and imports to 20 million tonnes. And we will improve biomethane production capacity up to 35 billion cubic metres. Lastly, in order to advance our energy efficiency, we aim to double the deployment rate of heat pump technologies. If we want these technologies to do the heavy lifting of the energy transition, then they need a welcoming research and innovation environment. Part of this is monitoring what is happening in research and innovation in Europe. Commission's report this autumn on the competitiveness of clean energy technologies will give us new insight into how to boost the EU competitiveness of the strategic energy value chain and how to increase the penetration of EU's clean energy technologies. And we need to reinforce these efforts on every front. The new set plan communication due at the end of this year will help us to do just that. Finally, digitalization is not a technology by itself, but it is the driving force of huge technological evolution, including in energy. So, in autumn, we will adopt the Digitalization of Energy Action Plan. And it will show that research and innovation is essential to progress in key energy areas, cybersecurity, energy data exchange, and the much needed investment. Ladies and gentlemen, this year has been a reminder of many things especially the significance of innovation in re reaching our goals. For pushing through the clean energy transition, for protecting our climate, and for helping us become fully independent from Russian influence. Thank you, and I wish you an excellent discussion today.